welcome to the area solutions channel in this video we'll be looking at the resolving of forces into three-dimensional rectangular coordinates i am quickly going to illustrate the principles that could be applied to resolve it, the force acting in space into three dimensions and we're going to wrap up with a very simple example these are examples of um, forces acting in space if we identify every component attached to the tire that could exert one particular force or the other you would see that each of these components are pointing to directions that are that are deviant from the x and the y directions so we can also have a third direction which is called the third axis and that's what makes it a three-dimensional system this one last example quickly you see that to describe the direction of each of the forces you cannot conveniently do so by just the the x and y axis you may also need a third axis which is the z axis to be able to describe the forces acting on this system if we take out one of the force I want to look at this force assuming it's being transmitted from one point to the other if we introduce our coordinate 16 x y and z it may still look as if it's acting on a plane but if we box up this force such that we can be able to properly visualize how this force is transmitted from one point say zero to another point a and quickly we, we could observe that this force for it to have moved from 0 to A, it has what you all call component. It has components in the x direction, it also has components in the y direction, and it has components in the z direction. By component, I'm referring to how this force has been transmitted from 0 to A. There is a movement in each and all of these directions. And as a result of that, the force can be written in component form fxi plus fyj plus fzk fx fy and fz are the components of the force in the x y and z directions respectively y i j and k are what we call unit vectors those in the x y and z as is respectively we can easily and quickly transform component of a force back to its magnitude if we know their values and component of a force taken to magnitude is just to add up the square of each of the components and find the squares once that is done what we have is the magnitude of the force this force makes an angle with the x axis it also makes an angle with the y axis and it makes an angle with the z axis these angles that it's making with each of the axes is what is called the direction angle of the force. So there are three direction angles for the force. One is the angle is making with the x axis, theta x. The angle is making with the y axis, theta y. And the angle it's making with the z axis, theta z. If these angles are known, one can easily calculate for the component of each of the force. To calculate the component of each of the force or take the force to component form is just to multiply the value of the force times the cosine of the angle what is called direction cosine of the force for each of the axes that the angle is making with each of the axes and as thus one can easily find the force in its component form but usually these values are not known so we're going to illustrate how these values can be determined given a particular force system and to do so if we have our Cartesian coordinate system and we have the box which we can easily use to with which we can easily use to describe the direction through which the force is transmitted. And we have our force transmitted from zero point to a point. To determine the position vector of the force for each of the axes, that's how far the force has been transmitted in each of the axes. This force has been transmitted by a direction by in the y axis. It's been transmitted by a direction bx in the x axis and as well as bz in the z axis. That is to say, this force will move along the y axis by a dimension by. Then it will move along the x axis by a direction bx. Then it will move along the z axis by, dire by dimension bz before it will get to point A the force would have moved through a dimension of b a distance of b if all these values are known one can easily find b 
b is equal to the square of each and all of the dimensions then you find the squares that's the distance the force has been transmitted from point zero to point a then knowing every other dimension one can easily find what you call direction cosine which is the cosine of the direction angle for each of the axes for the x axis is just to divide the dimensions that the force has been transmitted in the x axis by the value b then you do same for direction cosine for the y axis which will be the dimension that the force was transmitted in the y axis divided by the value of b that's the distance or the dimensions of the force itself and same can be done for the angle that is making with the z axis and if all these values are known one can quickly find the components of the force in each of the axis by multiplying the magnitude of the force by this direction cosine and the same can be done for each and all of the axis however there are certain times that the force may not be starting from the origin of the Cartesian coordinate system if this is the case I want to quickly point out that by knowledge from coordinate geometry where we estimated the distance between two points one can quickly find the distance between the two points for each of the axes bx by and bz as well so with the knowledge of this if you can estimate the value of bx by and bz one can quickly compute the value of b which is how far the force has been transmitted from one point to the other and easily from those value calculate the direction cosine and if the force is given in its magnitude form one can also easily calculate the the component of the force in the different direction we are quickly going to see an example for this case we are to resolve the 7500 newton force into its rectangular components that is to say this 7 1500 newton force we want to see the value of this force in its rectangular component to find the direction cosine of this force we need to find how far this force has been transmitted first in the x axis in the then in the y axis and then in the z axis we can quickly see from the diagram that this is our x axis this is our y axis and the one that points away from the box is z axis and the force was moved from point a to point b and along the x axis if this force is moving from point a to point b by the dimension we'll be talking about how far it has moved in this direction and for this case it is 50 so we can quickly write that bx is equal to 50 in the same vein if we want to see how far this bus has moved in the y axis from where it started how far it has moved in the y axis one would note that the force started from the base of the, of the cue board and it ended it at B, at point B. So the dimension that has moved in the y axis is this distance from 0 to B. And from our dimensions of the diagram, we have that that distance is 25. So we have that BY, BY is equal to 25. And finally, if we want to see how far it has moved in the z axis, for this to have moved from the base, that A to point B, it would have moved along this dimension for it to get to that point. And from what we have, the dimension is 48 meters. So we have that BZ is equal to 48 meters as well. But there's what you call sense sense is to know if it's if it is positive or if it's negative value that we have to take for this particular case if we are looking at the force that has been transmitted from a to b if this 
force by the time it's moving from point A to point B is moving in the X axis, it would have moved in this direction. And if you check, what is the direction of the X axis? Is it the same? If it's the same, then the sense by sense, I mean the value of positivity or negativity that should be here is going to be positive. Then if you look at the BY, by the time the force move from A to B, that is moving from A to point B in the Y direction, this force has moved upwards, which is in the same direction as the Y axis. So the sense for this case, for the Y axis, is also positive. And finally, for the Z axis, by the time the force moved from point A to point B, we discover that the force has moved from this point to this point and in this direction. That is away from the direction of the Z axis. So the force is moving away from the Z axis. As a result of that, the Z axis is going to take a negative sign. So the sense in the Z axis is negative. Then while we were discussing earlier, I said the next thing to do is to find what you call the dimension that the force would have been transmitted through, and I call that B. And to find the value of B, earlier I said B is equal to the square root of value you will get when you square and add up all the terms BS, BY square, and BZ square and for this case it will be equal to square root of 50 square square root of 50 square plus 25 square plus 48 square so one can either evaluate this or leave it as this value to work with it so to find the direction cosine that's the cosine of angle the force is making with each of the axes is just to say that cos theta s which is the angle that the force the 7500 newton is making with the x axis is equal to bs over b which is equal to 50 over square root of 50 square plus 25 square plus 40 square likewise cos theta y which is the cosine direction cosine of the angle which is the cosine of the angle the force is making with the y axis is equal to by over b which is equal to 25 over square root of 50 square plus 25 square plus 40 square and likewise cos theta z is equal to bz over b which is equal to minus 48 over square root of 50 square plus 25 square plus 40 square once this is known it is easy to find the forces in the respective components for this case if you want to find the component of force of the, the component of the 7500 newton force in the x axis fx it will be equal to f times cos theta x and we have our f to be 7500 newtons gotten from the value that was given in the question 7500 newtons multiplied by and we've already calculated for cos theta x earlier this is cos theta x so because we've calculated for cos theta s earlier, we just bring in the value here, which is will be times 50 divided by 50 square root of 50 square plus 25 square plus 40 square. And this is going to give us, and this is going to be 4, 7, 83.5 newtons and likewise fy is equal to the force times cos theta y that's the magnitude of the force that is given which is equal to 7500 
times 25 over square root of 50 square plus 25 square plus 40 square and the value for fy is going to be 2384.32 newtons and finally fz is equal to f times cos theta z and this is going to be 7500 times in this case we had minus 48 over square root of 50 square plus 25 square plus 40 square and that value is going to give us minus 4578.0 newtons Having calculated values of uh, fx, fy, and fz, one can easily write the force f is equal to 7500 newtons. Of course, this is a vector and this is equivalent to 4783 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, point 5 newtons i plus then the y component 2384. 0.32 g then the z component which is minus 4578.0 k and this is the force represented in component form i think that's all about resolving forces into components and i believe this video has been helpful i want to thank you for watching